Hello Dragons, my name is Julie Gray. Hello Dragons, my name is Davy Gray and we are the co-founders of Viper Club. We are here today seeking an investment of £80,000 in exchange for 15% of our company. Viperclip is the world's only fully insulated cable stapling solution. In fact, it's the only stapling solution in the world that's suitable for use on a 240 volt cable. When an electrician wires a house, they must secure cables onto a wooden joist. And in the 240 volt market, which represents about 90% of the houses that are built each year worldwide, that's done using a plastic clip with a metal nail and each clip is hammered into place one by one. As you can see, it's an awkward and time-consuming job. Our solution is a fully insulated staple and battery-powered staple gun. And in the UK, we have a recent regulation which says that you need to support the cables in the event of a fire, so that's done as well. Our staple is made completely from plastic, which means it doesn't conduct electricity and that makes it safe to use on a 240 volt cable, unlike a metal staple which is not safe to use due to the risk of electric shock. We've tested our cable clips with independent electricians and 96% of them said they'd buy our products. The investment that we're looking for would allow us to start tooling to make the moulds in order to take our unique, disruptive and sticky product to market. So thanks for listening. And if you'd like to try fastening some cable, David would be happy to show you what to do and then we can give you some samples. I'd like yeah, to have a go. I'd love to try that. A plastic cable staple and gun. I suppose uh, you're interested because it's not something you'd normally do. How do you know? Well, I've never Actually, seen that's it. true. <laughs> <laughs> Is the proposition entrepreneurs Julie and Davy Gray Whoa. hope will electrify the den? That's brilliant. They're asking for eighty thousand pounds. That's actually this one. very yeah. quick. In return for a fifteen percent stake in their business. Yeah. Thank you. I'd just like to draw attention to the fact that mine is lovely. <laughs> I was trying to put the product through its paces, Deborah. These dragons are very, very competitive. The product has certainly ramped up the rivalry between Deborah Meaden and Sarah Davies. But has it piqued Tej Lalvani's interest? Amazing. Oh, I mean, <laughs> it's elegant. It does exactly what it's supposed to. It's a game changer in terms of safety. How did you come up with it? I come up with this, what, over 25 years ago? <laughs> wow, OK. Yeah. I was thinking back then why well, staples not made of plastic. Yeah. He's a bit slow at getting things done. <laughs> <laughs> Got there in the end. Okay. So which are the countries that mainly use the 240 volts system? It's the USA, Canada and Japan who are 110 and the right. rest of the world is 240, 240 volts. 240 Europe and yeah. everything, okay. It is a big market, but actually China is the biggest market. They're actively looking for labour-saving devices for residential construction because they've, they've got to build 17 million houses every year in China. Okay, so the, the market is definitely massive. It's huge. The cable clip couple get off to a flying start with Tej Lalvani, showcasing a product with global potential. Sarah Davies has fired the gun firsthand, but will she bite the bullet when it comes to an investment? OK, well, I can see the need for the product. So what I want to get an understanding of is how ready are you to go to market? I'm going to assume the money that you're looking for is literally to get you through that final stage. Yes, it's for the tooling for this, the staples themselves. And there's a little bit of work with <coughs> prototyping on the gun. It's also to cover some of the IP because we have filed patents internationally. So a lot hinges on this patent. Yes. Exactly what have you gone for in terms of protection? Okay, within the patent, it's to do with a cable staple that's made completely from non-conductive materials, polymer and a thermoplastic. But you haven't got a patent? Not yet. So there's a question mark whether you will get it? Yeah. The next big elephant in the room is actually whether you'll ever get a patent that will actually preclude anybody 
just because of the substance that you're using to create it. I can't see how that's possible. The non-conductive material you're using, you think you're going to get a patent right over that. Have you got paperwork to prove that that is possible? Well, we've got all the paperwork on the, the patents. No, but that specific required. point. Because I think that's a very outrageous Well, the UK claim. Patent Office haven't objected any, to any No, of I don't the think they would case. object at this moment, because you haven't got a patent. That really sort of worries me. Peter Jones isn't convinced plastic is necessarily fantastic when it comes to patent approval. But it's the duo's journey from drawing board to den that's preoccupying Tuka Suleiman. What I want to do is go back a step and say, why is it taking you so long? I know. You know because we're working on our own funding, we haven't taken any investment. Right. We've been working with grants, and it was important to us to come into this without running up a huge amount of debt. Well, how much money have you put in the business? Um, we, we've been on quite a journey with that. We put 120k in. We put 120k. Uh, we sold the house, literally put the house on it. Okay. Put Davy's redundancy money, his pension, everything went into it. Wow, <laughs> that's like the fact that you've sold your house. Well, you, you can't ask an investor to put their money in the business if, if we're no, not prepared to, to back it up. Which, is, you know. which makes you both so credible. That's really admirable. I agree. I'm impressed with you guys. I really think there's potential with this. And as it happens, I do know the owner of one of the largest power tool manufacturers in the world. He would love something like this. Right. We could license it to his company, so I'm going to make you an offer. It's for all of the money for 30% of your business. Okay, thank you. Okay. Tej Lalvani puts his contacts and his cash on the table, but he wants double the 15% equity the entrepreneurs are offering. Is Deborah Meaden also sizing up the Staples business? What's not to love about you? What's not to love about the product? I have introduced trade product, brand new, not just in the UK, into Home Depot, over into the US. Different product, very similar story. Mm -hmm. So I am going to make you an offer. I'm going to offer you all of the money, and I want 25% of the business. OK, thank you. Thank you very much. Deborah Meaden undercuts Tej Lalvani by 5%. Peter Jones would normally be poised to up the ante, but it seems he's feeling unusually altruistic. I'm as competitive as most, and yet I've got a feeling in my heart your journey and your determination and passion and what you've done, giving up the house, everything you've done to get to this point. Looking at Davy now as well, the emotion, it's almost unlike a dragon to sit here and have the feelings that I'm feeling because I don't even want to compete just out of pure ego. I want the best for you. That's very good if you say that. And that's you. why I'm going to say, reluctantly, I'm out. Thank you Thank very much. much. A surprisingly undragon like Peter Jones lets his heart rule his head and bows out. Time for Sarah Davies to bring the den back to business. I never thought I'd sit here and say I was excited about plastic stables, <laughs> but I feel really excited about oh, plastic well. stables. <laughs> I don't have any experience in the power tools industry. Um, but my strength is, you know, I, I do a lot of work in patents. Mm -hmm. I do a lot of work in manufacturing and getting products from a concept stage to the manufacturing stage. So I would be willing to offer you half the money for 15% of the business. Okay. Yeah, thank thank you. you. And I would be willing to share. 
Sarah Davies wants all the equity originally on offer, but for half the money. She now needs another dragon to make up the rest of the cash. Is Tuka Suleiman prepared to partner up? I think that the most important thing is the whole package. Mm -hmm. It's understanding that your sourcing is dead right. It's understanding that the product is of top quality and having technical people around you to help you. I have a team in China who does just that. But I think you're gonna need a bit more money. I'm gonna give you 100,000 pounds for 25% of the business, but I'm also willing to share it half with Tej if he thinks the two dragons can be more than one. Um, I'm okay with the hundred thousand pounds, but instead of sharing it two ways, I think if we split it three ways, 10, 10, 10 percent, with Sarah involved with her expertise in patents and manufacturing, Tuka's with the sourcing in China, and me with the introduction to the power tool manufacturers, I think you have a whole complete package. Tej, can I ask you, with the Partil company that you're talking to, it's one of the, the big brands? They Massive, have, they have billions in, in sales. My concern is that if they say the same as what Peter's saying, you know, um, you don't get a patent and then... No, well, no I think you sell. can license oh, sorry, it because... Uh, well, I, let, me, let me ask okay. that, yeah. Um, I can... A demonstration of what happens when you get too many dragons involved. <laughs> I just want to add one thing on. If I had a significant concern over your patent, I wouldn't have been in the position to make an offer. Mm -hmm. Patents, what I do all day, every day inside, I would, I, I'm, I've got you back on that one. And Julia, what I would say is that I've heard from three people what I said in one. <laughs> do you want to go to the back of the room and have a chat amongst yourselves? Yeah. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> a difficult decision but one of which any entrepreneur entering the den would be envious. That's a tough one. What do you want to do? The backing of Deborah Meaden in exchange for a 25% stake and £80,000. Deborah would be really useful, but then again. Or a Dragon Triumvirate offering £20,000 more, but taking 30% of their business. You've got Tucker's manufacturing capability and you've got Sarah's ability on the IP. What's your, you got? Yeah. Yeah. I have to say, normally I'm the boss in this relationship, <laughs> but <laughs> I, d I did ask great. David. It is his product after all, um, and your choices. My choice. Thank you very much for all the offers. The choice is Deborah. Wow. I am wow. very pleased. Wow. And I think you've made the right choice. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. A victory for Deborah Meaden. Do you know, not often I get there with my heart going. Yeah, oh, really? my heart was going. <laughs> Thank you very well much. Done. A tie-up with a veteran dragon for the Viper Clip couple and £80,000 in the business account. It's just you couldn't have asked for any better. <laughs> I am not even looking at you. Man. I am so... I'm not even looking. <laughs> it, it's really all we could have dreamt of. We just couldn't have dreamt it would have went so well. <laughs>